Hey everybody, Wayne Bogan here. Today I wanted to talk about the battery upgrade we're getting ready to do on our Basecamp 20X. I wanted to cover the major components, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and hopefully see if this helps you out. So first, we already have the stock solar system. We have the two 90 watt solar panels, gives you 180 watt max capacity of the, the solar panels bringing down for, sorry, 180 watts of power coming down between the panels. We have the MPPT controller that's coming back in and feeding into the batteries today. And we have two of the stock Lifeline AGM 100, excuse me, 80 amp hour batteries that we're using today. So that gives you 160 amp hours total, but you're gonna use 50% of AGM. So we're actually using up to 80 amp hours of capacity that we have on the batteries today. And that's worked fine when we've been boondocking. If we're going hiking, we're hiking, we're gone all day then that gives us plenty of time because we're not running many appliances, lights are off, everything. But when it's in the wintertime, we're running the heater at night, we have lights on because there's less light, and we're in a shaded area where there's less sun to recharge the batteries, we start running to the edge of capacity after two, two and a half days. And so we just wanted more room to do that. The other, um, if we go through, as my wife and I have this running joke, the main thing that she wants to be able to do is to run her hairdryer. And in the conf current configuration, you can't do that. One, I don't have a way to run without a generator, a hairdryer, so I end up bringing the generator so that she can run the hairdryer and we can also make sure we don't run out of our 80 amp hours of capacity for the batteries. As I started researching and going down the path, I was gonna go 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. Really like the name Battleborn. They're more expensive because of all the good reviews, the quality support that they seem to give to everybody on that end. But then I saw a member of our Basecamp Facebook group had posted that he had used these EG4 Life Power 24 volt batteries. Started digging into it, and the more I learned, there's a lot of advantages of going down this path. Two main advantages, one being cost, the second uh, going through and looking at the size and the form factor. Now, I could have gone with the Battleborn. They have these game changer batteries that are much larger that you can use. Uh, but again, it's you're looking at a couple of different uh, elements as you go through and I ended up researching and decided that I wanted to go with 24 volt batteries so we've purchased two EG4 uh, life power 4 24 volt 200 amp hours so 24 volt 200 amp hours is the equivalent of 12 volt 100 for 100 amp hours or 400 amp hours total so these two batteries will give us a total capacity of 800 amp hours or 10 times the capacity we have today. So if we want to run the hairdryer for 10 minutes every morning and a Keurig for 15 minutes and recharge laptops, uh, run our lights all day, every day, run the refrigerator without worrying, we'll be able to do that probably for at least a minimum of a week to two weeks to see how that fits in. Now, I'm actually working on a power audit for a little meter that I built that came back in and lets me look at how much each of the different appliances in the base cap use today. And I'm slowly going through and using this to see, you know, if I turn on the lights, how much does that actually use? If I turn on the air conditioner, how much does that use? So if we look at it, the two main reasons for the 24 volt, again, were cost and size, the cost comparison. If we were to come in and get eight 100 amp hour batteries to match the 800 amp hours here for this 24 volt batteries, I would have to buy two of these at 1500 for about 3000 plus tax, or eight at today's website price was $874 for the unheated. It was just under 3500 for four or 7000 for eight. So 3000 versus $7,000, so significant savings. Two, if you did the 100 amp hour batteries for the size, you would have a long stream of batteries that are going out versus I've got these two that fit in a much smaller form factor. They're made to work in server environments. I'm used to working in data centers, used to working with servers, so this is not a problem, but I don't have a rack. So I've got to decide as I go through this build, will I build a rack? Will I just set them on top of each other like uh, Sterling had done in his video or his discussion about this and how we're gonna make this fit in. So we'll look at that. When, when you look at size, look at this blue box on the ground. This is roughly, from the measurements I've done in the base camp, the size of the current battery box, plus 17 inches in height. So I've gotta be able to put all of this gear and fit it all inside that box or expand the box. And as my wife reminds me, space is a premium, Wayne. Space is a premium. 
So she wants every bit of storage that she can have and she doesn't want as much of this taken away from it other than she might be able to give a little bit because she can use the hairdryer when to put this in place. So what are the major components that we're doing in the upgrade? The two 24 volt, 200 amp hour batteries. I bought a Victron Multi Plus. This allows us to take the power coming in from shore power, an electric outlet, bring it into the, the Victron. So when you connect in the shore power to pull the power in, it'll go in and charge the batteries. It'll also give power to the DC appliances, lights, fans, the other elements, the water pump, or AC appliances, such as powering your laptop or running the hairdryer or anything else in a traditional 110 volt outlet that you would see inside of the base cam. Connecting these together, I'm gonna to use a Lynx distributor Quite often a lot of folks in the builds will use bus bars. Well, this has two bus bars built in, but it has some intelligence with a motherboard built in that will feed back in. And so I'll take the power cabling, I bought four aught cabling, so that's four zeros, for connecting the batteries back into the Victron MultiPlus. Then we'll take that back and connect it into the Lynx distributor and use this as a hub or a central point for all the wiring between the batteries the Victron and the rest of the base camp. Also bought six gauge wire for going back into and feeding the uh, fuse panels, whether it's the DC or I'll use regular 10 gauge wire for the AC and I need to get some more of the 10 gauge wire. The other components are gonna be a Servo GX. So this is the little brains of the system connecting all the Victron equipment back and also trying to look at, and we'll see if it can measure and monitor the BMS or the battery, the battery management system, BMS, inside of the batteries themselves. And then I also need to switch, because all the DC appliances in the base camp are 12 volt, I need to go from 24 volt to 12 volt. To do that, I use this Victron Orion, and this will step down the power from 24 volt coming from the batteries, so it'll also be connected into the link distributor. So batteries to the links, to the Orion, to the DC panel, and that'll take it from 24 down to 12 volt so that we don't have to worry about any issues uh, and having to change out anything to something like 24 volt, which you don't find very often. Technically, it could have gone down the path of getting a 48 volt system, and I've seen some folks do that on some of the larger Class A's. But for what we're doing, 800 amp hours should be more than sufficient for the things that we want to use. Now, can I run the air conditioner off of this? Yes. You have to watch the batteries and make sure there's only a certain amount of power that they want coming out at any one time. And there's a surge on the air conditioner. So you can add something called a soft start to help on that side. But as we go through, the reality is in the basic testing with my little meter, the air conditioner on low uses a little over a thousand watts and on high it was around 1200 watts. So 1200 watts per hour very quickly eats into the capacity. So I'll do the math and put that in a spreadsheet in one of the future videos, but you're probably going to get somewhere around high end of nothing but the air conditioner, 10 hours on the batteries. On the lower end, you could probably get six and still have some power, but with only 180 watts of solar refeeding the batteries, you really need a perfect sunny day during the summer to get a lot of that back in, and it's not going to put enough power back in to offset all the power you took out for the air conditioner. Right? So that's very expensive. But it is gonna be a cheaper system putting in the 24 volt than uh, putting in the traditional 12 volt systems. We'll see over time whether that fits or makes sense. Uh, other pieces of equipment is we have a VE bus to USB. This will allow me to connect the computer back and work with the MultiPlus. There's a VE bus smart dongle that lets us use and connect back in with the servo and connect back with Bluetooth to this have fuses coming from the batteries, have a 400 amp uh, bus bar that we're gonna use for the fuses from Blue C, have four gauge or four aughts and six gauge crimps. We have the fuses from 400 amp, 60 amp and other sizes. Have my crimper that we'll use to put those crimps onto the wire, making sure all that fits in. Uh, for the smaller wire, I'll use something called ferrules. Uh, if you want to see how the ferrules work, take a look at Explorers.life's website and the videos that he's done on YouTube, talking about how this makes it super neat and clean. I'm not sure all the sizes I'll need, so it was pretty cheap to get lots of different sizes and the crimpers 
uh, getting in the heat shrink to go on the wires and a labeler. So I want to make sure everything's labeled nice and neat. Now my challenge is how do I fit all of this? And we won't use all the wire, but you're going to have the batteries, the Victron. You're going to have these other Victron units. Um, I may put in a, a fuse unit, or excuse me, a breaker unit for the solar panels so I can have a cutoff, but this is a little bit big, so I'm not sure that I'm going to end up using this one over time. And then I've got some other fuses I need to put into the regular breaker panel to handle the flow coming back between the system. But I've got to fit it all in that box with a height of 17 inches to be under the seat. So I might have to expand out a little bit, but as my wife said, storage is a premium lane, don't steal my storage. So as I go through, I'll take all of these, I'll do some videos as I'm putting them together. I'm not an electrician, not a professional. I'll show you what I know and what I don't know. Uh, don't do this by yourself if you're not comfortable doing electrical work. I have, I've done it in data centers, AC and DC. Uh, but I, again, am not an expert, so hopefully I won't burn anything up or cause any problems. But I'll be putting this in, showing videos for you, and let you see the journey as I go through and probably some of the mistakes that I make. Like, how am I going to mount these things in here? Am I just going to ratchet strap them down? Am I going to be build a little rack system for this to get them in? I'm not sure yet. Uh, but it's going to be a bit of a puzzle playing Tetris trying to put all this together. Wanted you to see it come along and hopefully it'll help you understand if nothing else hopefully it's fun for you uh, when i make some of the mistakes and we go through and see how this fits in i may end up using all the wire trying to do crimping because i have not done the crimping uh, and use the heat guns up to this point but it looks pretty simple so we'll see how that goes so if you like this click subscribe click like on the video put comments in either the question or when i post it in the facebook groups as i do the videos and hopefully this helps you out so if this does, fantastic. Uh, just let me know and let me know what else you would like to see or to understand. And I'll try to put those together as I'm going through. And hopefully we help each other out as we go through that. Thanks and have a great day.